If you work in game audio or create sound effects for any reason, you have to check out Render Blocks from LKC Tools. In today's video, I'm chatting with the creator Nikola Lukic for a demonstration of Render Blocks. Nikola, tell us about Render Blocks. Sounds really cool. Hi, John. Uh, thank you for having me. So, uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, LKC Render Blocks, and it's my uh, custom Reaper workflow for optimized asset creation. And so it's a way to quickly create, uh, manage and export assets from Reaper. And it's best for game audio and uh, SFX library authoring, but uh, maybe someone else will also find it useful for some other things. It has been available for a while, but uh, I have some updates to announce here and showcase. And I have also a new licensing model. So, uh, yeah, maybe we can we can start and uh, just to show you the tool and how it works. Yeah, I'd love to see an overview of what it is and how it works and, and the problems that it solves. Yes, yeah. Uh, so, of course, uh, to show you what it actually does, I need to tell you the concept behind it. And the concept is uh, using a block-based design. So, usual Reaper workflow is based on stamps and uh, items and regions. And uh, those are the things you actually export when you uh, create your files. But uh, this is like a hybrid approach that uh, mixes a little bit of everything into blocks. So let me just show you the gist of it. So we have a small project over here. Let's hear it. So something like that. Nothing special. This, this uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. I just pick some sounds randomly to demonstrate the, the feature. So I see that we have two types of sounds on different sets of tracks, uh, mm -hmm. two different folders and different layered sounds yes. with different variations. Mm -hmm. So normally that would be kind of tricky to export because it's multiple time selections you would need to have. And then you'd have to combine regions plus track rendering. And you got to yes. choose whether it's going through the master and all that stuff. So it's a pretty common task, layering sound effects and exporting with variations and everything. So your tool helps with that. Yes. And uh, it completely uh, avoids using a uh, render matrix. So you don't have to set up anything in render matrix. And that's one of the key features. So let me just show you how it works in ideal case. So you have uh, your items, you select them, you pack them, you name them and you export them. And when the rendering is done, you can choose to re-import them and to listen to them. So this is like a temp project. And if you're satisfied, then you can close this and use those sounds. And uh, when you're done, you can see that they are now all white. So that means that these assets were exported. And uh, also, maybe I forgot how to uh, set up these. Maybe I want these to be mono. So you can set this mono and let's render these. And let's say, okay, maybe these should be quad. Multi-channel, like uh, four channels. And then uh, over here, uh, we, we can choose and render them again. And now you can see we have mono files quad files and stereo files. This is one of, cool. the, one of the things that is not really easy to, to do in Reaper. You cannot export uh, different multi-channel uh, configurations at once. You need to change the settings in, uh, render, in render settings window. And then uh, use the queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah and or, then use the queue yeah. and, and stuff like that. So this kind of uh, gives you the ability to predefine. So I, I covered a lot, so maybe we, we could start uh, from the sure. beginning. The first question I have is, um, as far as signal flow goes, um, all of these are processed through the track folder that they're on? They're actually going through master. It includes everything from the track hierarchy and also the master, if you have something on the master. And uh, also item effects, if you have some item effects, right. that is also included. That's what I just wanted to clarify, that it's not just take effects that gets mm -hmm. rendered here which it, it kind of looked like it's so fast, it looks like an item render. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's, that looks super powerful and a huge time saver for people that 
that need to export so many files with layers like this. Yeah, it should be a time saver if uh, everything works correctly. You need to do some sort of repairing. And uh, I know that one of the downsides that people don't like, some people uh, had a comment that uh, they don't like that they need to have uh, to prepare additional tracks. Because with this, you need to prepare additional tracks for label items. What are render blocks? So it's a group of items that has a special uh, label item. So you can name it this SFX sound. Uh, this label item is a special item used for naming and for some uh, meta tags like that mono meta tag, or you can enter some notes. This needs to be uh, redone. I don't know. And this part is not going to be part of the file name. Uh, but it will be here, so when you're going through project and looking, oh yeah, I need to redo this again. And if you render it, you can see that it is not part of the file name. So it's just kind of neat way to keep some notes that you need as well. And also you can define some other settings here. So the label track is essential and it seems really useful as well. Mm -hmm. I guess it also provides a, an easy to use handle for all of those items to, to drag and reposition. Yes. yes, it has a, a bunch of uh, useful abilities. And one of them is if you want to edit this sound, you can unpack the block and then you can make your edits or let's say add some content over here. And then you, you already have your sound and then just repack it again. Very so cool. you, can, you can export it again in no time and it's ready. So that's, that is the basics of uh, render blocks. You need to prepare additional uh, tracks that will contain label items. So that's one of the downsides maybe for, for someone at least. And, uh, but mm -hmm. the cool thing is that you, you can do it like this. So this is manual uh, way to create render blocks mm -hmm. or, you can, uh, or you can do it automatically. So it detects clusters. So yeah. uh, you can create them automatically. But if you do it like this, so these will be, these two will be special, uh, uh, separate. Okay. And but if you want to include silence or empty tracks, you can just make time selection, and this is cool if you have some long animations and uh, with that have, uh, let's say, some delays and and uh, silences in in between. So this is kind of way, and you can move it and and mute it and stuff like that. So this is a simple project, and you can see that we have uh, no folders in here. We have one folder on the top and in here we have a bunch of tracks that are in the same folder. So there's no hierarchy over here, but you can still do things like this. You can uh, overlap them, make them on top of each other and you will not have problem. Each of these blocks will have their own sound, just containing these the two items inside the container. that are included. Yeah. yeah. So, and we can showcase that, let's say, holy. And you have three sound effects that have just the content that was included in the render blocks. How many different scripts are we talking about here? It, it seems like you've done a few that I've seen. Well, uh, there's a bunch of them and uh, most of them are covered uh, in my uh, separate video tutorials that I did. Mm -hmm. And, but some of them are new now, like this auto naming, and we're going to cover the, uh, that right now and this content navigator. Uh, but uh, most of them like are basic, you know, you have one to create blocks. Uh, it's the same one to unpack them. And then you have uh, the same one to repack them. Then you have one to delete them. And then uh, you have one to render, uh, name them and naming editor. So this is cool sound. And you have one to render them. So pack, unpack, destroy, uh, name, and render. So those are basic scripts. Okay, so this is another feature that I wanted to cover. It's called Content Navigator. So uh, it sounds kind of cryptic, but it's just uh, improved tracks and regions manager. I mean, uh, it's not a replacement for tracks manager, track manager, but it's something that... Uh, will completely change the way you approach project navigation and uh, the way you use Reaper for game audio, especially. 
a lot of times people organize their projects diagonally. And that means that they have uh, dedicated tracks and dedicated regions or time areas uh, in, in project. And so in the end, uh, their content looks something like this. And so this is a small project, but it's not a problem. But uh, the bigger the project is, uh, you get more and more issues with navigation. Maybe you can use this uh, uh, included navigator, but uh, with, with large projects, uh, it really becomes painful. Yes. This is how it looks. It represents the hierarchy of the project and it's updated live. So when I click uh, here, this is like a project uh, for some zombie character, let's say. And we have some footsteps. When we click, we jump to footsteps. Well, let's say just uh, concrete footsteps or just stairs. Or let's say we want to uh, listen and watch the attack. Or let's say uh, this is another situation. So over here we have uh, layers. So uh, let's say that of our character is uh, designed in two layers, like bones and gore elements. So this gives you the ability to click on just bones and listen to bones. Or just gore. Or to uh, listen to them together. That's very interesting. I've never, yeah, I've never seen anything like that. This is separate from render blocks, right? Uh, no, it's part of render blocks. Okay. So uh, it's it's part of uh, uh, its premium uh, feature, but uh, it comes with render blocks. When you have a premium uh, license for render blocks, you also get this content navigator. If you notice, the video track always stays uh, present. So wherever you jump, I mean, this video is not uh, related to the sound in any case. It's just the video I can showcase here. Uh, and uh, let's say go to stairs. So this is another part of, of this. Uh, let's open here. So if you show this ghost uh, files, you can just watch it like this closed. Or you can uh, open it and see everything that you have. Did you mark the video track as something special or does it automatically yeah. detect when it's named video? Yeah, yeah just uh, based on the name, if anything that has a video as a part of the name of the track, uh, it's going to be maintained uh, forever. So uh, let's say we add another track, uh, but these are going to be notes, uh, not not the video, but something you want to keep over here, I okay. don't know. And uh, if you name it with double star, uh, and let's say notes, and then you can enter some notes over here. I don't know, this is like some kind of notes. Uh, you need to restart the script and it will uh, pick pick it up. So now the notes are always here as well. And I, I have seen people asking for the ability to pin tracks so they're always visible. Mm -hmm. I think this is the first time I've seen something like that. That actually works. <laughs> well, <laughs> it also has some issues, uh, but I think uh, when I get enough feedback from people, I will be able to, to prevent everything uh, that's not working like designed or stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, looks great. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm uh, kind of proud of this tool, and I hope uh, people will find it useful. And uh, I just forgot one thing to cover, and that's you can use um, uh, like left click to uh, select, right click to open close folders, and you can use middle click to jump from markers. So you can quickly preview. You can quickly preview the sounds. Yeah, that's very cool. Great ideas. Auto naming, that's a new premium feature. So let's say that uh, this is a project there where we have uh, two folders, like two layers. Mm -hmm. Let's pack them like with clusters. And then now I can name auto naming script, uh, uh, which is going to use this structure over here. So if I use it and zoom in, you can see we have layer A, one, two, three, four, and they get indexes. indexes. So it's not name of the track, it's name of the folder. So cool thing about that is that if you add the folder over here and call it SFX and put uh, all these layers in, in here and rename this, uh, let's make it not this one. Let's or, uh, write, turn on our writing. And now you see you have the track hierarchy. So it's a way to use track hierarchy for 
naming items. If you want to skip some track, let's say we want to have a track name that is not going to be part of that uh, render blocks, you can uh, put this uh, double slash prefix and it's going to be ignored. Interesting. Yeah, so it doesn't actually end there. There's uh, another feature. So now you have a, a hierarchy even in regions and that hierarchy is going to be part of your name if you want. You can also exclude regions as well. So you don't have the name like left is now excluded from this. And if you want, you can also add some suffix, like we want to add suffix, let's say explosion, I don't know. So uh, now you can see here we have suffix explosion. And if I uh, run uh, all for these items auto naming again, uh, did I do it? No, uh, yeah, time selection has priority. Uh, so yeah, so you can see S fixed layer A, Foley center explosion. So that's auto naming, and this is new premium feature. Fantastic. Yeah, and you have a couple of formulas. So you have combination of tracks, regions, meta tags, then regions, tracks, meta tags, just tracks, meta tags, and stuff like that. And you can change the separator. Let's say I want uh, to use space instead of underscore, and now you have space. But then if you delete a uh, separator, uh, you will have everything camel cased. So it's really flexible and it allows you to, you anyway, you're going to uh, create folder hierarchy and uh, track hierarchy and uh, region hierarchy. So this is just a way to utilize that hierarchy to also name the items at the same time. Uh, and then when you uh, organize your project uh, in advance, then you are just done. You can just name the tracks and uh, export them at, at no time. I forgot to demonstrate this, but you have the ability to re-import these uh, using the metadata. So let's try this. So now they, they're keeping relative distances uh, like they were in original project. So Nicola, this looks fantastic. I know that there's a free version and a premium version. Can you can mm -hmm. explain the differences between those? There's new licensing model now, and you have free version and two premium versions. You have one personal and one commercial, and they're both the same uh, in, in the features that they have, but uh, the price is different depending on the way you use it. Like it's, if, if it's for your personal use or for commercial use. Uh, but I try to include uh, everything for someone and uh, something for everyone. In free version, you have unlimited number of blocks that you can create. You can use cluster packing, you have reopen support, and that's something we didn't talk about, but there's a video about that. It's a free tool for uh, Fmod and Wise that uh, lets you uh, reopen render blocks or other items and regions from uh, middleware directly, and it's supported by render blocks even in the free version. Uh, the limitation you have is that uh, you have uh, to render 10 render blocks at once maximum. You can't have channel meta tags in free version, you can have uh, auto naming and content navigator. And those are premium versions, but everything else is included in free version. You can install it on uh, Repack. Uh, the link is on my website, lkctools.com. And uh, I also have some tutorial videos to help you through the details of installation and basic uh, usage, getting started and stuff like that. So I want to thank you for sharing this tool with us today and for creating such powerful and interesting tools for the Reaper community. Thank you, John, for having me. And uh, it's an honor to be here on the channel. And uh, I am very excited to be able to share these things with people. To the audience, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.